Um, we could maybe move on to the book, um, Van Gogh's Twin, um, because it's been quite a while in the making, hasn't it? I mean, well, it has, yes. And I, I'm just thinking about the children when they were young, and I was actually do, was still, I was potentially working on it at that point because um, it, and it did start off as a as my PhD thesis, but that don't let that put you off. <laughs> it's very readable, yes. Uh, and I actually I rewrote it much later to, to turn it into a book and make it more accessible and incorporate more of the kind of information about the family, reads Alex Reed's family, and sort of just flesh it out more as you know, looking at him as a as a man and as a you know more rounded character, hopefully. Um, but the one, one of the reasons why I became, I mean, I became interested in him for probably several reasons, but um, I got the idea, I actually got the idea on a, on a visit to the Burrell collection, but he is one of these characters that you come across all the time um, in books about the Glasgow boys, about the Scottish colourists, about Impressionism, um, about Scotland, and he's always there in the background, and that's one of the things about dealers, that they seem to always get sort of left out because they're you know, they're, they're very important. They're important interfaces between the artist and, um, and, and the collector, but they don't necessarily, I mean, apart from someone like Saatchi, they never kind of make the, um, and he's more of a collector anyway. He, they do kind of go below the parapet somehow. They do, uh, yeah. And, and they, are, they do, I suppose, they work in mysterious ways. Nobody really understands how, how they work. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Um, and when I first started to, when I finished the book, or when I finished the PhD, I tried to um, get publishers interested in it, and they they just said, oh, art market, oh, dealers, not interested in that. Scotland, oh. Um, <laughs> it didn't take any boxes at all. Uh, and then in 2000, there was an exhibition at the Van Gogh Museum on Theo Van Gogh, on Vincent Van Gogh's brother, and suddenly the focus began to shift a little bit, more towards the art market and towards collecting, and it became a more kind of sexy subject. So it then became worthwhile reworking it and actually making it into a, into a proper book at a, at a later stage. Mm. But it has, that's why it's been such a long process, really. Yeah. And the title itself is quite an interesting aspect, too. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of people look at it and say, oh, I didn't realise that Van Gogh had a twin. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm afraid he didn't. Um, but one of, the re one of the things which is so fascinating about Alex Reed was the fact that he, um, he looked so like Van Gogh, and uh, so much so that the portrait that is the front cover for the book, you probably all know it very well because it's in Glasgow Art Gallery, and when that was originally catalogued for the catalogue resume of Van Gogh's work, um, it was, it was catalogued as a self-portrait because they believed it was a portrait of Van Gogh. Mm. And there's another portrait of Reed, which is now in Oklahoma, in a collection in Oklahoma, uh, which shows him sitting in the flat that he shared with the Van Gogh brothers. And that too was catalogued as a self-portrait. And you can actually read in the, in the original catalogue, it says, portrait de lui-même, portrait of himself. Huh? Um, and because they made the assumption that it was him in, in that flat that he shared in, with Theo van Gogh. Um, and then the other thing is that contemporaries who knew the two of them when they were living in Paris together, um, for example, the artist A.S. Hartrick, who was another Scottish artist and friend of Alex Reed's, friend of van Gogh's, he said that, the, that they were so alike that it was only when they got close to, to you, they didn't realise that they weren't twins. That's extraordinary. So, yeah. So I mean, it's extraordinary they should look so alike, and extraordinary they should actually meet up and live together. Yes. Um, it's just... It's such a coincidence. And yeah. I, I think the thing about Van Gogh is that he was actually quite drawn to people who looked like himself. Mm. And, he, and he very often, which causes confusion, paint, he was drawn to red-headed men. It's a <laughs> um, and he often quite a number of his subjects had red hair or he kind of almost exaggerated their, their, their features to make them look slightly more like himself, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's just part of it. But I mean, he did, the, the, this portrait in Glasgow has a, has a pair to it, which is a self-portrait of, obviously, of Van Gogh. Um, in, in, and it's in the Art Institute of Chicago and they're exactly the same size and the same kind of quantalist technique and they're on the same, um, they're both on card. 
And I think it's very possible that they were actually created as a pair to kind of hang right. side by side, which again... In the flat together. In the flat even. together, yeah. yeah. So it's rather kind of fascinating that they, they had this very close friendship, which then fell apart. Yeah.